Hey there. Uh, do you guys save coffee grounds um, for we can. gardeners? We can. Do you have? You don't have any set aside right now. Uh, no, we don't have any saved right now. We okay. Actually, just have to them into the trash can. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let me get a uh, skinny latte with honey, iced. Okay. Uh, what size do you want? Um, medium. Like if you ever did like want coffee grounds, like we can like if you have like a bucket or like a bag or something. Just like bring a bucket and leave it. Huh? Just bring a bucket and leave it like with my name on it, or fill that... it for you. you can okay, it. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Use it for gardening or like. Yeah, just for gardening. Goal this morning. We'll do a quick discussion about uh, acquiring things for your garden. In this case, green manure. So, green manure are nitrogen sources that aren't animal based like uh, chicken manure or a chemical fertilizer uh, your green manures are grass clippings um, leaves and uh, coffee grounds great leaves and or, uh, <clears throat> coffee grounds and uh, grass clippings are great nitrogen sources so you always want to be able to find ways to introduce nitrogen to your garden uh, they don't tend to burn your plants like animal manures do or chemical fertilizers. So coffee grounds are a great source, but the problem is how much coffee can you produce by yourself? If you drink a pot of coffee a day, that is about a third of a cup of coffee grounds that you're able to produce for your garden every day. That's not very much. So you have to go to outside sources. Now I go to my local Starbucks. And they set aside these little bags like this at their front door for gardeners. In a, uh, they've got a little garbage can. And they'll fill these little foil bags with coffee grounds and leave it by the door. And yet, generally, it's a race. There's still another fella that goes down there and he beats me most of the time. Uh, but if, I, if, you, if you get there and the bag's gone, just ask the girls at the desk and they usually will grab you some more coffee out back. So these are the little, uh, these are the little uh, compressed coffee discs when they make an espresso. They'll put it, the coffee in this little container and then they press it down and then they uh, pour the water through to make the, the cup of coffee or the shots they're gonna put in your fancy, uh, dancy drink. So that's one way I get coffee ground. So in three trips to Starbucks, not counting this little bag here. Oh, you guys see this, I got about, I'm gonna say 50 pounds of coffee just from co Starbucks. But what about those uh, silly little drive-through things where the kid comes out, hangs out of the windows. Hey, how you doing, man? What are you doing today? Drinking coffee? Oh, cool, that sounds cool those guys what do you do with them because they're a little more chaotic they don't have that solid storefront they don't have the room to set aside coffee for you so what do you do with those guys well what I do is I went and asked you know will you guys save coffee for me and then I brought them a uh, five gallon bucket like this with a lid it wasn't this color it was a it was a, a white one nondescript and then on the lid, I wrote my name, and on the side of the can, I wrote my, my phone number. So when that can gets full, they'll, uh, they'll give me a phone call, and I go pick up that can. That way, it's nice and easy for them, and they know that you're going to come back. And if you don't come back right away to get that can, they'll just give you a call, and you can swing by and grab it. So those are a couple ways that I acquire coffee grounds to feed my garden because I constantly have to find a way to feed my garden and uh, keep those big healthy plants. So that's just a quick discussion. We'll see you guys later.